Good evening, Internet, and welcome to Top Shift 64. Now, you find me in the Pleiades Nebula, because the barnacles have had some fun things happen around them. As you can see here, we're approaching a barnacle site, and hanging above it is a Farragut-class Federal Battlecruiser. Now, I'm quite relieved here because he's green, and that's probably because I have a friendly reputation with the uh, Federation. In fact, I've actually even got one of their ranks. I rank higher than the Empire, in the Empire, so to speak, but uh, yes. Now, normally these battle cruisers, they've been reportedly firing on other commanders as they approach the barnacle sites. Now, there is rampant speculation about what's happening here. And one of the things that uh, I'm really happy to report about is that people are beginning to get involved with it. it oh, there you can see just on the side there, that's where the barnacle actually is. Oh, it's on the side of a mountain. I don't think Landing I've actually been on one of those before. So we're going to go out and have a look at it. Now, of course, barnacle sites, for all those people that um, have been missing out, uh, are the only place where you can get meta-alloys, or harvest meta-alloys. You can actually buy them from one of the stations in the MIA system. However, um, you run at a loss. So, unless you actually need them for one of the engineers, then um, your best bet to get make money out of these things is to actually go harvest them. Now, of course, that seems to be a little bit more dangerous now that these battle cruisers have started appearing above them. Now, these barnacles were spotted at the beginning of the year, uh, and they caused a lot of uh, fuss, especially the only way to actually interact with them was to shoot them. But um, once the meta-alloys were found that they could negate something called the Unknown Artifact. Or is it Unknown Probe? It's one of the two. I think it's Unknown Artifact. The Unknown Artifact, actually, if you drop that off at a space station or carry one, it actually starts to degrade your ship systems. If, however, you've got something, a uh, cargo hold made out of meta-alloys, then that degrading, degrading doesn't happen. So, what is the Federation up to? Well, to be honest, I don't know. Could it be some kind of play for the barnacles? Are they doing genuine research, even though there are other um, organisations, like Canon Research, who are looking into this in a far, far more detailed manner? And they're player-run as well. They're player run as well so. um, if you want to find out more about how they're progressing, then I'll put the uh, link to their website in the show notes. Now, as you can see here, I mean, this was um, a week ago. This seems quite peaceful, and oh, hang on, I think of. Is that another commander there? Can't tell. So at the moment, it does seem that all this slot seemed to... That is another commander, look! You can see the SRV up ahead. Oh, now there, there is a fantastic view of of the Farragut cruiser. He's blocking out the planet there. Yeah, he's moving. Who is he? Right. Let's try and get a nice picturesque view of the of the whole situation. So there you can see another player in his SRV is oh, bit of clipping. <laughs> yeah, another player in his SRV also having a look at the barnacles. And they're almost blocking up the gas giant is the Farragut cruiser. Now those things are two miles long and uh, very much the Imperial Star Destroyer of their uh, of this game only matched in power by the uh, Majestic class from the Empire. 
Now there's a whole lot of speculation about what's going to happen now. It's not... It's pretty acknowledged that the, the Empire will... Um, well, will the Empire do anything? Don't know yet. There has been um, items on Galnet lately uh, with people with the Empire noting the alarm of, of these battle cruisers arriving in the system. But uh, as of the moment, no formal response has been created. So as you can see here, I'm just hacking about and seeing what I can find. But in the meantime, of course, things have moved on quite a bit with uh, the actual game itself. We're now up to version 2.104. Now, the important one for me was actually two, the previous version 2.103 that put in the fix for the engineers, which I, I talked about in the previous video. You can now spend your reputation to actually get the weapon effects you want. So if you go to, um, uh, let's go back to Todd the Blaster, uh, McQuinn, I if I wanted to have those cannon shells which create heat and do the ship and the heat damage to other ships, if I don't get it on the RNG run, then basically I can spend my influence with him and uh, he will actually fit that particular effect to my cannons. I think that's a better system that will, that was in place because um, I think the RN the the randomness was very off-putting, and uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, or see that my, that uh, Frontier have decided to listen to the community on this one and uh, and take action. Now there are extra changes coming quite soon, which. Um, Ooh, that's a, I, I can't seem to target lock in here. This is a pain in the backside. No. There we go. Oh, you got to love the thrusters. Every now and again, you just need to jet up just to get out of trouble. Hmm. Ah. There we go. And I do have. I must admit, I do have a bit of a problem using the turrets. I, I've got my X-52. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get the mouse control in the X-52 to work. So I end up having to use the mouse as well. Which can be a right pain in the backside. I must admit, I think I'm going to need a lot more practice with the SRV. Right. Now where are we up to? I've got plenty of stuff here to collect. It's just stuck in the terrain. Yes. Now, one of the other things that were coming um, is that they're going to start making uh, modifications to the Discovery Scanner. Uh, now, or one of them, rather. I think it is the uh, Detailed Planet Scanner. Now, what that will be able to do is when you actually scan a planet that you can land, it will actually list all the uh, minerals and materials that you can find there which is very useful um, if you're trying to find rare items that oh good grief look at this really bad driving I might as well just roll right down the hill <sighs> Come on. oh ah, there we are rocket by baby we're off again Yes. So basically, if you scan a planet using the new planetary scanner or detailed surface scanner, it should list all the materials that are there. So you don't end up spending a lot of time driving around a planet looking for a material that you won't find on that particular planet. Which I must admit, I'm having a bit of trouble with at the moment. Uh, now, in order to find all these materials for the engineers, I've had to resort to mining. So I've now got four main ships. We've got the T9 for trading, we have the Vulture for Bounty Hunter work, uh, we have the um, Asp Explorer, my, my favourite ship, the S. Antimonius, for obviously exploration work, and we now have a Cobra Mark IV to do mining. 
Um, I did use the Cobra Mod 3 for, for a while, but um, it, it just didn't seem to fit the purpose. But the Cobra Mod 4 does, which I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. However, it's not as maneuverable, and it's not as fast as its uh, previous iteration, if you see what I mean. And, uh, well, that actually blew up. I didn't think there was anything left there. But it does what it says on the tin, it's perfect for mining, I think. But the, the discovery scan the discovery scanner is going to come in incredibly useful at a later point, uh, just to help with this signposting issue that I think Elite Dangerous has been suffering from for a little while now. Now, as far as these barnacles are concerned, it's not just the Pleiades Nebula that has um, has had them appear. We've had them appear in. Um, at least two others. And in each case, does that mean that federal battle cruisers are heading out to each other? I think there's only this system where they are. But, uh, yeah. The other thing that these things seem to point at is a particular system. All, all these um, uh, unknown artifacts that people are discussing, uh, discovering, are pointing at a particular system. I think we're all, I'm going to have to head there next just to see what's going on. So, yeah, I mean the original Elite Dangerous, uh, the, when the Engineers was released a couple of weeks ago, it did feel that, I don't know, they, they hadn't missed a trick, but it just felt that little bit incomplete. And I think that was mostly down to this... Uh, randomness when you search for things. Oh, I'm beginning to feel sick looking at this. Well, it just goes to prove that the gravity model works right. <laughs> yeah, because you, you get a double hit, really. Um, you have to spend ages grinding out um, you have to spend ages grinding out a whole lot of uh, minerals. And then you take it to the engineer. And then you hope, again, there's another random factor to get. First of all, not only the modification, but also the, the effect, the special effect that you want. And I think a lot of people, after seeing the videos, really got excited and thought, right, we really want to have healing beam lasers. And when they found out it was very difficult to get the healing beam lasers, and how much effort it would take, and how much luck it would need, I think... A lot of people got very discouraged. At some point we had very prominent members of the community saying, listen, this is this isn't working. We've got to we've got to uh, we've got to really do something about it. And like I said, Frontier listened and uh, this is one of the main reasons we've got the changes in coming now. Now this is actually quite interesting because the the barnacles have started to really start to appear in Galnet, which is um, the uh, the Galaxy News feed that you can get on the computer. Now there are a, a couple of items which ever makes people sort of uh, take note, and that is the main issue seems to be about why the Federation are there. Now, I'll just read this. This is from the 1st of July, today. It says, Over the past week, there has been considerable debate over the presence of the Federal battle cruisers in the Merope system. The ships have taken a position near the non-human structures commonly known as barnacles, prompting censure from various sections of the galactic community. Following a recent statement from Admiral Maxon Prince of the Federal Navy, in which it was argued that the Federal presence in Merope was entirely legitimate, Senator Zinov Zimina Torval has released a statement condemning what she claims is an attempt to lay claim to the barnacles and by extension the meta-alloys that they produce. Meta-alloys are the only material capable of countering the disruptive effects of unknown artifacts and are therefore so of singular value. There is no doubt in my mind that the Federation's decision to deploy warships 
represents an attempt to clean possession of these barnacles and the meta-alloys they produce. This is unacceptable. Senator Torval refused to be drawn on what action, if any, the Empire would take in response to this federal blockade. But given the recent conflict between the Federation and the Empire in the Daramo system, it seems the more likely this development heralds a further erosion of federal empire of the Federal Empire relationship. Now, it must be noted that um, the Alliance also have a presence in this nebula. A little listening post that not many people know about has been set up recently, and I think they're just monitoring the situation. So... Now there is the battle cruiser. I haven't actually been this close to a battle cruiser since... Um, yeah, since Alpha, really. Every any time I've come close to the battle cruiser, it's always open fire, and I've had to do a, a brave Sir Robin to get away. But as you can see, um, they're quite friendly with me. In fact, so much so I'm taking my asps straight into in between its landing bays. No. Whoa. <laughs> There you go, that's a death Death Star trench run if I ever saw one. So, yep, just hang in there completely peacefully. Now, players have attacked these battle cruisers and they have managed to even uh, drive a couple of them off. However, they do seem to come back very quickly and with Federal Corvettes as escorts. Landing so, gear uh, yes. Does seem to be quite an awful lot going on down here at Pleiades. The other thing that I, I must point out is that this is the first time in ages that I've been to one of these nebula, and actually on the night side of the planet, you're able to see what the nebula looks like. Because if, if you look here, it's, it's, it's beautifully orangey brown in the sky. There you go. Lovely green. Oh, ow. Yeah, I forgot about the gravity. Landing gear deployed. Right. Slowly, slowly. Jeez, that, that must be on a, a really bad hill. Ah, there we go. Right, down we go. I must admit, um, I mean, we're six months in, and I never get bored of landing on planets. It is just phenomenal. And when you're driving around the planet, you suddenly realise how big the scale of this game is. I mean, we all know that in the future, that we'll be able to walk around the ships. Does that mean we'll be able to get out of the ships and walk around on the planets themselves? I don't know, but it might be a, something interesting to speculate. Now, I noticed that there was a point of interest from these blue circles earlier, so I thought, oh, right, let's, let's investigate and see what's here. Unfortunately, my, uh, I, like I was saying earlier, my driving skills really do need a little bit more um, practice. Right, in other news, um, we are two weeks away from LaveCon. Now LaveCon is a um, is the, an Elite Dangerous convention uh, near Northampton on the 16th and 17th of July. Now uh, I'll be, because, because I'm part of Lave Radio, I will be there myself. Uh, I'll be running the Elite Miniatures games and we do have devs from Frontier turning up uh, for a question an answer panel, and obviously uh, everybody at Live Radio, Game Land, uh, Land Room, the whole um, <laughs> the whole elite community silliness that everybody knows and loves will be there, which means that also that means there'll be a Dockers. There will be a Dockers episode. I do apologise now in advance. I have nothing to do with that one. <laughs> Uh, mostly because I'll be, I can't uh, reprise my usual role because um, 
I'm afraid I'll have to, I'm only there for the Saturday. But it is one of the highlights of the uh, the social cal calendar with the elite community, so I'm hoping that I'll see a lot of you there. I'm still looking about, I just can't see what I'm looking for. Now, as you can see, the the, the wave scanner, which is the uh, the thing above the the normal radar, is showing very very thick thick um, radar responses there, high up in the scanner. Now, each unique item that you can pick up has a, its own unique signature. Now, this to me looks like some kind of wreck. Oh. And I was right, this is a complete wreck. So we've got destroyed SRVs. We've a couple of destroyed SRVs. Uh, now, uh, one of the things that I have discovered lately is, is that if you find one of these wreck sites and it's got um, a cargo rack, you can actually shoot the cargo rack and the cargo inside will spill out. Now, that is very very useful but it will probably mean multiple trips back and forward between your ship because um, the SRV itself only holds two tons Wow, I wonder if that's the, the battlecruiser shot this thing down wouldn't surprise me oh what's that? right I'm actually a bit scared of that, I think I'll leave it alone <laughs> yes, this is the problem that I'm having with the SRV. It, I just cannot get the controls set up exactly how I like them. Um, I don't think for actually driving about in the SRV that the X-52 is a good match. And this is one that m I might be better off switching to a gamepad over. But, um, yeah. No. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just too old and need a lot more practice. Oh, hang on. I wonder if I can scan it using the data link. There we go. Aha! Ooh. So we've got a d some kind of data material, which is useful. New item in my communications bar. There's my ship. And, a, and an intel package to deliver somewhere. Ouch. One of these days I will get the hang of driving this thing, honestly. Ah, oh, well there's my ship. And I probably won't go down half a valley just by getting back to it. So there we are. Right at this moment in time, uh, we have an interesting situation happening in part of the game, away from the main bubble. Um, we've had a missing space station, which was the, the Jack space station, which uh, was trying to reach Beagle Point. That went missing, and it has, it has now been found. And um, over 22,000 light years away from where it started. So, um, if you're perfectly welcome to, to visit it, uh, I just recommend going there on a very good explorer ship. Those the hints have been dropped by Frontiers that explorers from now on really should go armed. Now, what is meant by that, I have no idea. But, um... Oh, good grief. He's fat, he's round, he's bouncing on the ground. <laughs> Bloody drivers. Amateur. And there we have the, we have the Sanctimonious right there. I call the, the sanctimonious. We can't actually um, name our ships yet. But one of the things that we can do 
is for if you have a cobra, if you have an eagle, if you have a sidewinder, you can buy the ship packs. Now that's one of the things that I have bought are the uh, ship packs, and you customize your ship using these um, ship packs. And I must admit, I did like having my cobra set up in a certain way. It was really nice uh, way to personalize the ships you're flying. I mean, I'm still waiting for the ability to name your ships. I don't even know if that's going to be possible. It has been mentioned and put on put on the list according to Sandro, but well, we'll wait and see. Uh, I'm just going to line up and then I think I'll head away. But one of the things I'll do from now on, I think I'll hang around the Pleiades sector for a while. I was actually going to go back to um, KOI 3663 just to uh, have a drive around the system that I discovered but um, it does seem to be quite interesting around here so with that thanks for joining me and I will catch up with you all hopefully in LaveCom in a couple of weeks thank you and good night <laughs>